Welcome back to Lonely Man BGs and this video series on how to play War of the Ring. In this video, we'll be going over the Hunt for the Ring. Not the game, the Hunt for the Ring, we'll do that later. But first, a quick shout out to Ryan Fitzharris, who is the Elrond sponsor for this video. He backed my Kickstarter for tens of dollars, along with many other backers, whose support made this series possible. Throughout the game, Sauron is searching tirelessly for his ring. The Hunt for the Ring represents this process. This is the Hunt Pool. The Hunt Pool is a set of tiles that represents the effects of a successful hunt. These tiles are placed in an opaque container at the beginning of the game. Every time a hunt is successful, a tile is randomly drawn. If all hunt tiles have been used at any time throughout the game, all the standard beige tiles are returned to the pool, but any of the special blue or red tiles and any tile that has been permanently removed from the game are not. The background color of these tiles indicates the type. Beige are standard, blue are for the fellowship, and red are for the shadow. Most standard hunt tiles show a numerical value between 0 and 3. This represents the effectiveness of the hunt and is also known as hunt damage. Some tiles may also have special icons. This eye icon represents variable numerical value. This reveal icon represents the fellowship being revealed to Sauron. Special hunt tiles, which have a blue or a red background, are set aside at the beginning of the game. These enter play only by the use of certain event cards. When said event card is played, the special hunt tile is set aside until the fellowship enters Mordor, then the tile is added to the hunt pool. Some tiles have a negative value. This means that there is no hunt damage, and instead, that number is subtracted from the current corruption. Some tiles have a die icon. This means that the hunt damage is equal to the subsequent roll of a die. The hunt begins every time the fellowship moves. First, the shadow player determines the hunt level. This is equal to the total number of shadow action dice in the hunt box. Remember, these dice were placed in the hunt box during the hunt allocation phase, in addition to any eye dice that were rolled during the action roll. Then, the hunt roll is performed. The hunt roll consists of a number of combat dice equal to the hunt level. Each result of a 6 is a success. A maximum of 5 dice may be rolled for any hunt. The hunt becomes easier for every time the fellowship moves in a single turn. For every action die the Free People's player places in the hunt box after movement of the fellowship, the shadow player adds 1 to each hunt roll die result. Note, a roll of 1 is always a failure, regardless of the modifier. There are also hunt re-rolls. If the ring bearer's figure is in a region that contains any of the following, the shadow player can re-roll one failed hunt roll die for each condition that applies. 1. A stronghold controlled by the shadow player. 2. One or more shadow army units. 3. One or more Nazgul. For example, if the ring bearer's figure is in a region with units and Nazgul, and a shadow controlled stronghold, they would be able to re roll three dice. These re rolls also receive the plus one bonus for each free people's die in the hunt box. In order to determine the hunt damage, we look at the successes. If the shadow player rolls at least one success on the hunt roll or re roll, the hunt is a success, and the shadow player draws one tile from the hunt pool. If the tile is numbered, its value represents the damage inflicted. If the tile shows an eye, the hunt damage is equal to the number of successes rolled in the hunt roll. If a tile with this icon is drawn due to the fellowship entering or leaving a shadow stronghold, or due to an event card, the eye is considered to have a value of zero. If the tile has a reveal icon, the fellowship is revealed after resolving other effects. Now, we'll look at the order to deal with the effects of a hunt. First, the Free People's player may use a single relevant play on the table event card to cancel or reduce the damage. Second, the Free People's player may use the Guide special ability. If the hunt damage is still one or more after this, the player may decide to take a casualty by losing a companion, which we will go over in a little bit. Thirdly, any remaining hunt damage is dealt with by using the ring and increasing the corruption value. Fourth, if the hunt reveals the fellowship, the progress token is now turned over and the rules in the previous video are followed. Note, if at any time during the hunt resolution, a new guide is appointed, like in Mary and Pippin's ability, the ability of the new guide may be used immediately. If the Free People's player decides to take a casualty in step 3, that player must eliminate one companion. They can choose either the guide or randomly pick one companion from the fellowship, which includes the guide. If they choose to go random, the shadow player selects a random face down companion counter from the fellowship box. That companion is then eliminated from the game. If the hunt damage is higher than the level of the companion, the damage is reduced and any excess damage is taken as corruption. 
If the hunt damage is lower than the level, the companion is still eliminated, but no corruption is taken. If the Free People's player uses the ring, the corruption counter is advanced on the fellowship track, equal to the number of hunt damage left over. Let's talk about hunt effects when declaring or revealing the fellowship. Let's say the Free People's player declares the fellowship and a certain ability or event forces the player to draw a hunt tile. If the fellowship was declared in a Free People's controlled stronghold or city, any reveal icon is ignored. If the fellowship is revealed, however, and multiple hunt tiles are drawn due to stronghold presence, events, or abilities, each tile effect is resolved completely before resolving the next effect. See page 41 in the rulebook for an example. And this concludes our video on the hunt for the ring. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at our final task, which is Mount Doom. Thanks for watching.